If we go to San Francisco, one of the biggest things with a lot of these cities is coffee shops, right? And obviously Starbucks is will be having a huge impact in San Francisco. I mean, if you just look at the downtown portion, you already have like 15 to 20 Starbucks. Now zoom a little bit further out and you've got even more Starbucks around the location. I mean, the barista chain in San Francisco, they number from 50 to 60 stores. And not to mention, you also have several other smaller independent coffee shops as well. And here's the thing, in San Francisco, New York City, Seattle, these very wealthy cities, people are willing to spend five to seven dollars for a cup of joe. And it's pretty crazy to see that kind of stuff. But here's the thing, even Starbucks isn't making any more money in San Francisco because one of the biggest customers that buy these expensive coffee drinks are gonna be your office workers because San Francisco used to have a massive increase of 150,000 office workers coming to the city every single day. And those guys need the caffeine to keep things up and going. And yes, some people bring their own coffees, but many of them will just go to like a Starbucks, you know, go to Blue Bottle or go to like an independent coffee shop. And now Starbucks is closing seven San Francisco locations in the coming weeks. Here's the thing, if you go to the Midwest, if you go to a normal city, generally 99% the Starbucks doesn't close. In fact, the Starbucks defeats other coffee chains around the location. And if you look at universities, there's always like two to three Starbucks. If you go to like New York City, Starbucks don't close. Starbucks are opening every single day. So it's very unique to see San Francisco having seven Starbucks closing in the next few weeks because they're just not getting that many business. Not to mention the crime rate is super insane. The robberies are very high. Like I said before, the crime is high because the laws are so lax. And I think business owners are kind of sick of it. And I think even business owners really want super drastic change. I love San Francisco. I've been there before the pandemic and it really makes me sad that the city has really deteriorated to this level. And I think the only way for San Francisco to be saved is to have really drastic changes. Very, very big changes, which I'm feeling that the citizens of San Francisco are just not ready for. Here's the thing, like Starbucks closing, I get that the mom and pop stores are closing, but when you start getting to the big time, big boy retailers who could afford massive losses and these guys couldn't take it anymore and they're shutting down, it's crazy. I mean, I thought the CVS's and the Target's closing down is a big deal in San Francisco, but when you get to like just coffee shops closing down, it's just like a whole different animal. And look at this, right? You, this, these are locations that they're shutting down and we're gonna be seeing more of these to come. And if you guys are wondering, it's probably just a Starbucks. Well, guess what? We got many other stores. In fact, Target will be closing down nine stores in major cities across the nation, all right? And three stores out of the nine are in one location, San Francisco. San Francisco has a massive shopping scene. Like I said before, it's a very compact, very dense place. And you do have a lot of these targets, which they basically just saying goodbye to the city. San Francisco is such a big market for a retailer. If you're a retailer like Target, if you're a coffee shop like Starbucks, you want to have as many of your stores in tightly compact, high income tech cities like San Francisco, you want as many of your stores in there as possible. But here's the thing, Target's surprisingly are actually losing business in San Francisco, whereas they're supposed to be making a lot of money. I mean, before the pandemic, the city was roaming with tourists. There were a bunch of people in the city having fun, tech workers are everywhere, and the crime rate wasn't this high. In fact, most of the craziness were mostly centered around the Tenderloin district, okay? The decades old open air drug market, which were all of the crime and stuff like that is happening. I mean, even before the pandemic, San Francisco shoplifting is pretty bad, but at least it was tamed, right? So the targets and other stores were willing to put up with the crap. And the vacancies back in the old days was less than 5%. People were actually fighting each other tooth and nail just to get a front retail space in the Market Street. But now people are deserting Market Street. In fact, the landlords are even offering you guys two months free rent if you're renting at, in one of the retail spaces, which nobody is, is taking the bait. I mean, the city's even giving out tens of thousands of dollars for people to expand their businesses or open a new business in San Francisco, which nobody is doing. It's really sad to see a lot of these targets just simply closing down. 
And it shows you that the shoplifting, the theft is just so out of control that in my opinion, even if they fix things, it's probably a little too late because when a lot of these retailers close this many stores in this fast of a speed, generally speaking, they don't really wanna come back. And many times these retailers hire analytic companies to pretty much tell them what the next five to 10 years is gonna be like, which many of these companies are not confident that San Francisco is able to turn itself around in the next few years. So they're willing to close down because the longer they open, the more money they lose. I mean, and also check this out. Even LinkedIn is dumping office space. And it's kind of funny that the company who is always trying to supply jobs to people is now trying to leave San Francisco and they will be renting out almost a thousand, I mean, almost a hundred thousand square feet of office space, you know, five to seven floors of this space to other people. It's a big deal. And San Francisco's office space is becoming really bad. You got tech conferences leaving and much, much more. And when San Francisco looks like this 24 seven, I mean, the moment you walk out in many of the streets, it just looks like this. People say it's like a third world country. People say it's like a battlefield. And don't even get me to Oakland. Oakland apparently is even worse. And scenes like this are happening in a lot of American cities. We're not really seeing any sort of drastic change. And this is just one of the many reasons why there's barely any investment in the city. There is barely any people who wanna come in the city and there's no investments in the city. And, but if you look at other cities, right? Even New York City, like if you go to Manhattan and Brooklyn, retail and businesses are booming pretty well. We're seeing a lot of high class, very expensive investments over there. Same thing in Las Vegas. We're seeing a lot of investments in housing, businesses, and also tech companies. Don't even get me started to Miami. Those guys are doing so well that even commercial real estate is actually going up in value which is a rarity these days. So San Francisco is seeing a new burst of robberies and retail closures since Monday. We're gonna be seeing more of these robberies because yes, you're probably seeing videos of the cops finally doing a little bit, but that's just one incident, right? There's crazy amounts of robberies and shoplifting every single day, probably in the hundreds in San Francisco and the rest of the Bay Area. And they can't really do anything. There's a massive police shortage there's also a shortage of just security and also absurd laws, right? You know, you can't really clear homeless encampments in front of her business. Well, kiss your business goodbye because nobody's going to her bakery if there's like a bunch of homeless tents outside. I'm just gonna be real, right? I feel like there should be some rules. You just can't have tents on the streets. I mean, am I crazy or what? I mean, I don't really think that's a really crazy thing to really request. I mean, we want to have a clean, safe city I mean, San Francisco, I don't know, man. At this point, a lot of people just aren't even moving here. A lot of tech companies are moving out, okay? The office vacancies are heading to 35%, but the real vacancies are more like 50, 60, 70% in some buildings because a lot of buildings are still rented out, like the Facebook building and 181 Fremont's, but there's no tenants. Like, yeah, they had the lease till like 2031, but nobody's working there. So they're just waiting for the lease to end and they don't want to cancel it. And this is what's happening. It's a really sad scene in San Francisco. But let's see what happens. You know, if they do change things around in 2023, 2024, I'll be very, very glad. But right now, hey, even the Starbucks is leaving.